Hello and welcome! My name is Gabriel, and today I am doing the mid-year book freakout tag. This is probably my best timing for this video yet, I'm usually pretty late. For those of you who don't know, the mid-year book freakout tag is just a tag that booktubers like to do to check in halfway through the year on our reading. What books did we like? Hate? Whatever. I don't need a huge introduction, we'll just get into it. Question number one is, what is the best book you have read so far this year? And this one just gets a free pass for me because it is obviously Lap Vona by Otessa Moshfeg. Otessa Moshfeg is my favorite writer. Everything she writes will take over my life, and this book is no exception. Lap Vona is about the citizens of a medieval fiefdom in the Middle Ages. Medieval. The town is being hit by natural disasters and is being ruled by an idiotic, tyrannical lord. And there's some magic in there. It's really fantastic. I think that it was really unexpected, dark, and funny, and it is a perfect response to this current moment in time, and I think it's going to hold up for a long time as well. Number two is best sequel, and I don't read sequels at all. I don't like them. <laughs> I That's not really true. I think generally... I like books better when they are one and done, because like the shorter a book is, or the less installations you have in a series, the less opportunities you have to mess it up. The only sequels I've read this year are like plays, which were both written as unofficial sequels by different authors than the original. Uh, those were A Doll's House Part 2 by Lucas Nath and Gary, a sequel to Titus Andronicus by Taylor Mack. Of those two, I prefer A Doll's House Part 2 by Lucas Nath. It's just very well written and excellently done. Gary was kind of wonky, but... <laughs> a Doll's House Part 2, great. A Doll's House Part 1, or otherwise known as A Doll's House by Henrik Ibsen, is about a family living in Norway in the 1800s. Uh, the mother, Nora, is unhappily married, and at the end of the play, it made history because she left her husband and children and went out into the world on her own. A Doll's House Part 2 takes place 15 years later, and it's when she comes back. It was on Broadway in 27... the 2010s. <laughs> Question number three is a new release that you haven't read yet, and my answer for this is H of H Playbook by Ann Carson, which I don't even think came out this year, I think it was in December of last year, but whatever. <laughs> it's about Heracles, I think. Ann Carson is a classicist, and her work is kind of all over the place. She sometimes does pretty straightforward translations, other times she does poetry of her own, and then she does these really weird, like, tactile kind of books. Like, one of my favorites is Knox, which is like an ancient catalyst poem, as well as fragments of letters from her deceased brother, just kind of thrown together in this big box of a thing. It's a very cool kind of object to have. And H of H Playbook looks kind of like that. It's like fragments of a translation about Heracles, but also like images and fun tactile things. I don't know what it is, but I want to get my hands on it. Question number four is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. And I'm very lucky, the only two books that I really cared about this year already came out. Those were To Paradise by Hanya Yanagihara and Lap Vona by Otessa Moshfeg. So now I just have to wait until 2023 when two of my most anticipated books are coming out. And those are the third book in the Axiom's End series by Lindsay Ellis. That's a series about alien first contact on Earth and the political ramifications of that in an alternate history, which branches off from our own timeline in, like, 2008. So that's very cool. And the other book is Emily Wilson's translation of the Iliad by Homer, which I'm so excited about. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that her translation of the Odyssey is like one of my top five favorite books of all time. I think she is a genius. I cannot wait for both of those. Technically, I'm cheating because neither of them come out this year, but it's my channel. I can do what I want. Question number five is biggest disappointment. And, oh, so many. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't like a lot of what I'm reading right now. You know, it's not even that I don't like it. It's just that I'm not very excited by a lot of it. I'm kind of just passively taking in words. And the books that I am excited by aren't what I have been enjoying. I'm not reading a lot of, like, fiction, narrative stuff. A lot more poetry and whatever. But... Anyway, the most disappointing book for me so far this year was probably Department of Speculation by Jenny Offal, just because I was expecting a book 
which like said and did things and I'm not sure that it did. Whatever, it's just like a very fragmentary, sparse kind of thing. I probably wouldn't have disliked it as much if I did if it had been marketed to me as poetry, but instead I was told that I was getting a novel and I don't think I got that. I've been unpacking how much of my expectations as a reader are the result of marketing, so I'm trying to like disconnect that. Like, just because a book is sold to you as a novel doesn't mean that you shouldn't appreciate it as a weird abstract collection of words. That's also why I've kind of abandoned star ratings, unless it's to give something like five stars, just because, like, if I'm reading a book just docking and adding points, with the goal of like creating a star rating for it at the end of it. I don't think that's a very genuine experience. That being said, I didn't like Department of Speculation. Another one that I didn't enjoy incredibly, and actually this is a much bigger disappointment, and that is Ocean Vuong's new poetry collection, Time is a Mother. So Ocean Vuong's first poetry collection, Night Sky with Exit Wounds, is one of the most beautiful things I've ever read in my life. I just adored it, and so I expected his second collection to be on par with that. And I don't think it was bad, I just think that he kind of leaned into aspects of his style which are very unique to him, and instead of coming off as, like, new and brilliant, they came off as... wonky. What did I write down exactly? So there's a lot of, like, contemporary references, and rather than, like, adding to the picture of the person who wrote them and, like, adding to the soul of the pieces, I felt like they kind of just dislodged all the ideas and ended up feeling less impactful, more scattered, more contemporary poetry <laughs> derogative. I still think it's very good. I still will read anything Ocean Vuong puts out. And honestly, it might have just been the time that I read this collection. I just don't think I'm in the mindset where I am enjoying things. <laughs> Question number six is biggest surprise, and my answer to that is absolutely on music conversations with Seiji Ozawa by Haruki Murakami. And I'm saying that this is the biggest surprise because even though I knew I was going to like it, I didn't think that I would love it. And I didn't think that it would jumpstart my latest hyperfixation, which is books about classical music. This book showed me, like, not only a bunch of new incredible music, but it taught me how to listen to music, and it taught me just what to look for, and it, like, threw all these names and places at me that I've been, like, really excited to read about since I finished that one. Question number seven is, newest favorite author? And my answer to that is Amy Berradale, who was the author of You Are Having a Good Time, which is a short story collection I read all the way back in January. Just nothing has topped this. Her stories are so funny and weird, and it's just, like, Every time she comes to a crossroads as an author and she has a decision about like whether to go the conventional route or just the most unexpected, unhinged, just joyful, terrifying direction, she always chooses the more exciting option. I think that the only other writer I can compare her to is Otessa Moshveg, and that's funny because she is also one of Otessa Moshveg's favorite writers, but she's only put out this one little short story collection, and it was in like 2016. I cannot find anything else written by her in the years since, so I, I hope that she puts out something again just in the future, because I love her work, and I bet a lot of you guys would too. So look up copies of You Are Having a Good Time, make it popular, maybe we can bring her out of hiding. The next question is newest favorite character, and there is a woman in one of the Amy Berridale stories who I just think about all the time, <laughs> and I can't even remember the specifics of the story, but she like... Oh god, she like goes to a yoga retreat in the woods, and while she's there she runs into one of her favorite authors, and it's just a really weird out-of-body experience, and I think about her and that story all the time. I wish that I was at college right now where all of my books are so that I could just reread it, because I, if you can't tell, I'm in a reading slump. It's, you know, I'm actually, I'm reading a lot, I'm just not finishing anything. <laughs> I'm like starting books, putting them down, just left and right. I am listening to a lot of audiobooks at work, and I'm reading a lot of, like, historical nonfiction books, like, one chapter at a time, like, I'll just be like, ooh, let's learn about Bach today. Anyway, question, the next question is a book that made me cry, and the answer is nothing. I have a cold, dead heart. Nothing has gotten to me this year. Write better. I don't know what to say. The next question is a book that made me happy, 
And my answer is Felicity by Mary Oliver. This is a collection of poems about love. I love love. I love Mary Oliver. I think she's a great poet. It's just delightful. It's short, sweet. I wish I had my copy here so I could read one to you, but I guess you'll just have to go out and read it yourself. Where are we? Question 13. Most beautiful book. And that's to paradise. And I wish I had my copy because just the physical object is glorious, but like... Look at the cover. It's one of those covers that you can tell was just designed with the specific intention of becoming a classic. Like, it's just instantly iconic. Absolutely beautiful. Show-stopping. Incredible. Hanya Yanagihara. You will always be famous. And then question number 14 is a book that you absolutely must read by the end of the year. And I'm pretty sure that my answer for this question has been the same all three years that I have been making videos, and that answer is just the rest of Toni Morrison's books. But hey, I'm closer now. Now all I have to read are Tar Baby and The Bluest Eye, and her short story Recitatif, which I did start, I just can't finish it because I can't finish anything right now. <sighs> While I'm here, I just want to talk about what I'm reading right now because honestly those are the most exciting books to me. So I mentioned I really have been enjoying learning about music, so I have two books to show you. The first one I found at a thrift shop a couple days ago, and that is Molto Agitato by Joanna Fielder. Joanna Fielder was the former press secretary for the Metropolitan Opera in New York, and this is kind of a, like, tell-all memoir exposing the dark trade secrets of the Met. It's fun. It's less a book about music than about the politics of one very specific institution, but it is the institution where I hope to have a career in the future, so. Next is one that I am like so, so excited to read, and that is Wagnerism, Art and Politics in the Shadow of Music by Alex Ross. So, Richard Wagner was an opera composer in the 19th century, and his works kind of fundamentally changed the landscape, not only of music, but just of art. <laughs> This book is sort of grappling with how this artist whose work has a comparable impact to that of like Shakespeare, Dante, Mozart, like how did somebody create that kind of an impact on the world of art? And also how did his work help create the aesthetics of fascism which led to Nazi Germany? So this is very exciting. I've never seen a Wagner opera. I've just heard individual pieces. Uh, but later this summer, I am going to be seeing a production of Tristan und Isolde at the Santa Fe Opera, and I'm very excited for that, and that's what finally convinced me to just buy this book to better contextualize the artist, familiarize myself with his work, and kind of find an ethical way to appreciate his work in the 21st century. Some other things I've been reading... Um... <laughs> How to Sing by Lily Lehman. I kind of stole this. For, I didn't steal it. I checked it out. <laughs> I did check it out from my university's music library. This is just a technique book by Lily Lehman, who was like a very famous opera singer in the 19th century. She was a contemporary of Wagner, sang a lot of his works across the world. Oh my god, I actually have Lapvona because I was already in my hometown when I bought my copy. I wasn't still at college. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Oh my god. It's kind of in the same vein as To Paradise. It's got like this bright blue font and the classic oil painting. Uh, it's a very big trend in publishing right now, which I believe was started by Otessa Moshfeg's My Year of Rest and Relaxation. Everyone wants to be her. Who can blame them? I also found this copy of Memorial by Brian Washington at a thrift store the other day. This is has been very popular on booktube for the last couple years. It's about like this couple where one guy has to go to Japan while his father is dying and leaves his husband back, his boyfriend, in Houston with his Japanese mother who is visiting. So, like, this guy and his boyfriend's mom are in Houston while the guy has, like, run off to Japan. It's very tense. I don't like this very much so far. I don't think it's the fault of the book. I just think contemporary fiction isn't what I need right now. But unfortunately, I'm about halfway through, and so far, I am a hater. I, I, I think that's it. If you liked this video, give it a big thumbs up, and comment down below your thoughts on any of these books. Comment your answers for any of these questions. Tell me what you've been reading lately. If you're new here and you'd like to stick around, hit subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.